two of the most successful programs in college hockey history meet today. Only one will advance to the Frozen Four. Nine-time champion Michigan and seven-time champion North Dakota face off next. Welcome to the 2016 NCAA Hockey Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual. A spectacular Saturday yields to an exciting evening of hockey in Cincinnati as Michigan and North Dakota meet in the Midwest Region Final. North Dakota made its way through to tonight's game with a 6-2 thrashing over the four seed Northeastern while Michigan needed an overtime goal to beat the third seed Notre Dame. It's number one and number two for a spot in the final four. Hello, Alan Bestwick from Cincinnati, along with the Frozen Four's 2009 Most Outstanding Player, Colby Cohen, a national champion with Boston University. When the bracket came out, a lot of folks looked at a potential North Dakota-Michigan matchup and said, top two scoring lines in hockey. Ooh, how about you? Electrifying offense. We've got some of the most exciting players in college hockey across the board tonight. Uh, some great players to look at. Let's start with one of the top scoring lines in all of hockey, Michigan, and their leaders, the CCM line. These line they do it all they have a scorer in Kyle Connor they've got a playmaker in his line mate TJ Comfer and then Alex Mati goes 200 feet he does everything on the other side of the puck we're gonna see a really similar line Nick Schmaltz plays with so much skill Drake Kajula he does everything he goes up and down the ice he wins battles and then you've got the exciting freshman phenom Brock Besser leading the team in points it's gonna be an exciting one tonight North Dakota top seed of the region wearing the home whites with the green trim. Michigan in the blue and maize right into the zone. Connor feeds far side. Mott save. Rebound. Another shot from the point. Knocked away. Michigan with some quick early chances. The North Dakota goalie is Cam Johnson. Drive for the point. Another Johnson save. So Troy Stetcher will finally clear the zone for North Dakota. Now a transition play. Besser gets into the zone, far side. They dump it deep. And Michigan will flip it out clear. Ledoux makes the play right at center ice. Hits Kajula with the entry pass. Now Schmaltz will try to get it in. Well played along the boards, but he keeps it in. Here's Schmaltz into the slot. Shot from the point. Steered wide of Michigan goaltender Steve Racine. Ledoux for the point. Gets through Racine with the left pad. Kajula to Schmaltz. Looking for some room. Back out to the point. Shot from the far side. No. Pullman fires it in. Off Racine's pads. In the slot. Schmaltz. North Dakota with its chance at the early pressure. And something we talked to Coach Billy Powers about for Michigan earlier today. Michigan start. They talked about how important it was. They're going to love the way their first shift went. But North Dakota, like they've done all year, they answered with a high-energy shift to their own. The defense, Allen, they're already getting involved. This North Dakota D, they love to jump. They jump like frogs, as Dave Starman told me. <laughs> Michigan has to tag up to keep from being offside. But the puck again deep in the North Dakota zone. So how about that for a frantic first minute and a half or so? Each team with some opportunity and pressure deep in the other's end. Brim Chizik had a great game last night. Yesterday against Northeastern, he couldn't find a way through some of the Michigan defense. And the Wolverines entry zone attempt was denied. Now here's an offensive zone turnover. But quickly cleared the other way. Here's Chiswick, fires, missed on the far side. And Steve Racine, he looks dialed in early. He's at the top of his crease. I talked to his parents earlier today. They said, wow, are we nervous? The mom just hanging out, pacing, or, and, their, and, her, and his dad, he's a little more cool, calm, and collected watching, the, watching his son play out there. It's kind of typical, isn't it? Hockey parents. Four there in the green and white, Keaton Thompson. That is the defenseman all the way in behind the net, but he clears back out. And Michigan is able to clear the zone. North Dakota, though, with a quick transition. Back in with Chiswick. Chasing in deep behind the net. 
Michigan defenders Nicholas Boca, one of two freshmen who had terrific games against Notre Dame in their first ever college playoff experience at the NCAA tournament. Here's Schmaltz, splits the defense, gets ridden off the play. And Nick Schmaltz, he has the ability to split the defense. He has breakaway speed. A lot of guys, they slow down with the puck. Nick Schmaltz, he's able to speed up with the puck. It's one of the things that makes him so hard to defend. Puck tapped out of play. It gives us a minute to catch our breath and take a look at how our teams are planning for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Well, we already talked about Steven Racine. He looks confident out at the top of his crease. He was great for his team last night. And then this is from Billy Powers, the assistant coach for Michigan. He said, our position of our wingers in the D zone, keeping an eye on those North Dakota defensemen. They like to jump, takes it right into North Dakota. They get up the ice. They transition well as a team. It's something Coach Bradbury for North Dakota, they preach. Another thing, physicality. They want to be physical against this Michigan skill. Both teams trying to establish the physical presence. That faceoff took a couple of attempts to happen as bodies were banging off each other, and officials had to step in and separate. Connor's shot, knocked away. North Dakota will try and match what they call their heavy line. Rhett Gardner, Luke Johnson, and Austin Pagansky up against the Michigan top line. Scramble in front of the net. And goaltender Steve Racine is able to get on the puck with no damage. Well, if offense is so much a big part of things for each of these teams, the defense and the goaltending, they're going to be keys tonight. Always a key when you're facing such a high-flying offense. It's important to set the tone early that we're going to break the puck out and play clean from the defensive zone. Here's the senior goaltender for the Wolverines, Steve Racine. He's been um, questioned at times, though Coach Red Berenson says he may have had a couple of shaky games early in the season, but I thought he's played really well for us down the stretch. Well, they won the Big Ten Championship, and they won their opening round playoff game here in the NCAA tournament. That will be an ice, and the faceoff will come back down in front of the Michigan goaltender. Cam Johnson for North Dakota has been one of the best in the country for sure. You see his numbers, second in the NCAA in goals against, one of the finalists for the Mike Richter Award. Both goaltenders for their teams to win are going to have to have big games. Well, rebound control is huge for both these guys. They're bigger bodied guys. They play Cam Johnson. He plays a little farther out of his crease, but their rebound control, something to keep an eye on tonight. Both teams go to the net hard. So the CBS line on for North Dakota, Schmaltz, Kajula, and Besser. The second line on for Michigan, Selman, Nieves, and Kyle. That's Kyle, he gets the puck in deep. Ledoux chases for North Dakota. Kyle keeps it in. He had a terrific game yesterday against North Dakota. 23 for Michigan. Here's the breakout. Besser fires it back the other way. They have to regroup. Puck fluttered a little bit off his stick. Then Besser couldn't get the tap in to go. Nieves feeds back to his defenseman. DeYoung turns it over on this side. Rather, Dowling turns it over. Young's feed to Downing went awry. Now Besser working behind the net. Kyle comes back to help the defense out. Feeds it right to the North Dakota point. Shot hits a player on its way through. Sanderson on. Colton Sanderson, the senior for North Dakota, 26. His shot doesn't get through. Michigan will dump it out and try and give itself a little breathing room. Quick turnover and up through the neutral zone. Flip in. DeYoung's pass misses on the near side. Sanderson comes out with it, and will get the puck in deep. Chasing from the far side. Joe Janatweenen for North Dakota, but Michigan's able to cycle it around. Gage Osmus, the North Dakota captain, fires it out, picked off, and fought for. Good neutral zone play there. One of the reasons both teams are having such a hard time entering the zone is a point of emphasis on both sides is holding the blue line. Having a good gap in the neutral zone, not backing off, and holding the line. Puck knocked down, Olsen, that'll be offside. North Dakota has to uh, tag up, and here comes Michigan. Near side, Zach Wierenski, their star defender, feeds it forward. 
Skips through into the offensive zone, immediately cleared back out by Gage Osmus for North Dakota. Little game of say, can you cl clear the blue line? Michigan player falls. Ledoux ends up with the puck. Feeds it to some open ice. Kept in the zone. Tucker Pullman looking for some room down deep. Michigan not able to clear the zone yet. And this is the first time Michigan has seen a team that can really match their skill and speed. And right now we're seeing the play go up and down the ice. The pace out there right now, very high. Schmaltz circles back into the slot. His effort to get a shot through blocked by JT Comfer. Now they find Besser behind the net. He moves with speed, turns, fires right into the breadbasket of Steve Racine, and he ties it up for the faceoff. Well, a lot of speed, a lot of fury, a lot of frantic action, but nothing's hit the twine yet. The NCAA Hockey Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. And in part by new Gillette Pro Shield with lubrication before and after the blades. Shields while you shave. And the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event now through March 31st. See your Lexus dealer. The Yost Ice Arena, home of Michigan hockey, where the students can have some rather creative chants. One of the most fun places you can play out there in the Midwest. And where Michigan always has a very significant home advantage, Red Berenson has been manning things there. Now in his 32nd year, the 76-year-old who's done it all in hockey. Some speculation as to whether this might be his last year behind the bench at Michigan. Red telling us when we met with him yesterday, it is the last year of his contract. If there's a new athletic director, he'll meet with him at the end of the season, and they'll sort that all out in due time. Certainly under Berenson and his predecessors, the Wolverines have had some tremendous success in the NCAA hockey tournament. Hard not to have a lot of respect for this program, Red. After all these years, he manages to keep it so much fun for all of his players, and they have fun when they win. Puck thrown out in front by Besser. Nobody there in white shirts, so Michigan comes out with it on a break. The other fan on the pass goes to the far side. Slipped into the zone by Nolan DeYoung. Kyle. In behind the net. Justin Selman. Ridden off the play. The clearing pass, though. Intercepted. Here's Nieves. Feeds it far side for Selman. Selman in deep for Kyle. Back to Selman. He'll get it back to the point. DeYoung has gotten his way back there. Shot saved by Johnson. Tapped out to Schmaltz. Over to Besser. Here comes North Dakota. Well defended. Stood up at the Michigan blue line. Michael Downing with a great stick there at the blue line, not over committing his body, but making a great play, breaking it up with a good stick extended. Gardner Johnson and Pogansky on now for North Dakota. Here's Gardner to Johnson, fires one at the side of the net, Racine holding the near post, keeps it out. Wolverines in for a line change. And they get the puck in deep. Brendan Warren, Cooper Marodi, Tony Calderon on the forward line for the Wolverines. Here's the North Dakota breakout. Cross center ice. Joel Janet tween in. Floats one in, well handled by Steve Racine. And then flipped back out by Brendan Warren. Fight for the puck. Michigan. Player goes down, tapped in front. Colton Sanderson ends up tapping it right to his own goaltender, Cam Johnson. And it's tied up for a faceoff. As much as that play maybe looked a little dangerous there for North Dakota, this is a short support defensive pass. I don't mind this at all. Using your goalie, taking a break. That's trust. That's heads up play. Cam Johnson, he's out. He's alert there. He covers the puck. They'll take the stoppage. That's all good and fine, unless uh, Tony Calderon got his stick on it. We're in that blue jersey, right? Turnover. Osmus overskated the puck for North Dakota. Flipped out to Pogansky. He'll fire it into the Michigan zone. Comfort takes it over there. Quickly fires it back out. 
Mott was knocked to the ice, far side. North Dakota comes back, gains entry into the Wolverine zone. Paganski behind the net. Luke Johnson feeds it back around to the point. Here's Gage Osmus. Let's one in, doesn't get all the way through. Michigan back the other way. Here's Kyle Connor. Good job by Mott to stay on side. Connor spun around, nowhere to go, and hit there as he tried to pass it across ice. It came back outside the line. Far corner. Somebody left JT Comfer alone. Feeds it deep. Out in front. To the point. Shot doesn't get through traffic. Gage Ospis 20 is everywhere for North Dakota at the moment. The team captain. Kyle Connor leading the nation in scoring. Challenge there. Puck goes into the crowd and a whistle and a stoppage in play. And North Dakota, they've got to be careful here backing off. You don't want to give these players too much room. You want to respect their ability, but the best way to respect a player with that kind of skill, be as close as you can, no more than one stick length away. Offensive zone faceoff. And Max Schuert's going to be tossed. Dexter Danks will come in and take it for the Wolverines. Wins it back to Schuert. Shot didn't get through. Now the attempt to kick it back into the zone by Zach Wierenski misses. Here comes North Dakota. Puck over skated near side by Trevor Olsen. Zach Wierenski, 13 for Michigan. One of their best players. He plays the game with a lot of skill. A few shifts last night, he decided to really take the game over. He scored a big goal to give his team momentum. Really fantastic player in all three zones for the Wolverines. Draft pick of the Columbus Blue Jackets. And here he comes. That'll go all the way in. That was Bunieva, sorry. 12 instead of 13. And a whistle. And they'll bring it all the way back on the icing call. Well, the pace of this game so far, it's staying very high. Both teams throwing their best punch right now. The team that's going to win this game is the team that's going to make the other team's defense turn, break pucks out, make life miserable on the other team's defense. Face-off win by Kajula. Soft shot through. Schmaltz trying to get the rebound around Racine. Held the post. Back to the point. Shot doesn't get through. Kajula again fires. Bounced it off his own man. And a big hit by Kajula near side. And much discussion about it afterwards. Well, Drake Kajula, he's not afraid to throw his weight around for this North Dakota team, ending this rush of flurries with the big hit. 8.57 left in the first. All right, Matt, thanks. Quinnipiac, if they go on to win that one, we'll get the winner of Yale and UMass Lowell. That will come up later on tonight, 7.30 Eastern time. And here in Cincinnati, the Midwest region final being played tonight. North Dakota and Michigan. Brad Berry with 31 wins in his first season as head coach for North Dakota. Now the most successful ever as far as wins are concerned. First year coach for this ultra successful North Dakota program. Took over for Dave Haxtall. But Haxtall went to the uh, Philadelphia Flyers in the National Hockey League. He was an assistant and a player at North Dakota. There's a shot. Tied up, Alex Kyle shot, very easily handled by the glove hand of Cam Johnson. We talked about Michigan and their history in this tournament. Second, tied for second, most successful team ever is North Dakota. One of those teams, when you see them on your schedule, you're fired up. They get the other team's best game. It does not matter who they're playing. When you see that Fighting Hawks logo, you're giving them your best game. I'm trying to find a way to see if they can make a third straight Frozen Four. Scoring chances, by the way, way in favor of North Dakota right now. They've had the better of it, but nothing on the scoreboard so far. Kajula feeds back to Shaw. He'll send it back around. Besser behind the net. Had to work hard to get his stick free. Interesting here. This is first line against first line. 
Connor Comfer and Mott out against Kajula, Schmaltz, and Besser. Here's a chance. Shot tipped away by Racine. Attempted to find a player in front. And the Wolverines able to clear. Well, both these lines are so balanced with ha having Kajula and having Mott on this on each line. You're not going to run into any problems matching them up. You have speed, you have scoring, playmaking, and grit. Going to be a great matchup to keep watching throughout this contest. Puck in deep as Rhett Gardner is on for North Dakota. Pinch on the far side, Tucker Pullman. Is able to force it back around. There's Austin Paganski. And that shot will get tipped out of play. Tomorrow, the NCAA Women's Elite Eight for you on ESPN. At 1 Eastern, it's Washington and Stanford. And then at 3.30, Tennessee and Syracuse. Both games streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. That is tomorrow. Tonight, we're settling out the Midwest Regional in the NCAA Men's Hockey Championship Tournament. U.S. Bank Arena, Cincinnati. Very quickly and heavily, um, uh, speedily played, I should say, as far as the action on the ice. First period, scoreless between North Dakota and Michigan, and a shot in well handled by Steve Racine. So we're um, also seeing both teams trying to establish uh, a physical presence, and a little dislike can be kind of fun for hockey watching. There's definitely <laughs> some dislike out there between these two teams. Keep an eye on the change matchup going on right now. North Dakota coming back with Troy Stetcher's pair on defense against this Michigan fourth line. Something to keep an eye on. He likes to jump and be involved. Clearing pass out by Joseph Ciccone. All the way down the ice. Doesn't go all the way for icing. And now the dump in by North Dakota on the far side. Shane Gershich taking a hit to uh, get the puck out of the zone. Kept in by North Dakota. Now the blast by Gage Ausmus. Hits a stanchion, hits the back of the net. Cutler Martin played it there. Gersich all over him. John Simonson, who had a, his first goal since October in yesterday's win over Northeastern. Fans looking for a call, perhaps from a hit from behind. Referee's arms firmly at their sides. We play on. And now an arm goes in the air as North Dakota, Troy Stetcher got taken down from behind at a penalty to the Wolverines coming up. Well, you can't take your hand off your stick when you're chasing a player. You see Danks playing with the free hand there. They're going to call that every time. A smart player feels that, goes down. North Dakota power play, they've been dangerous as of late. Michigan's penalty kill, they like to fly around. Besser, Sch Schmaltz, Kajula, they're going to try to use those seam plays for North Dakota. North Dakota scored on one of its two power plays it had in its win over Northeastern yesterday. Shot tipped. Pagansky was standing right in front of Racine, the Michigan goaltender, but it went up and over the net. <laughs> Johnson's back pass goes out of the zone. And you see some of the matchups of power play versus penalty killing for the two teams. And we'll keep an eye on Luke Johnson here. His father, the All-American scorer, and Hobie Baker, runner-up for North Dakota. He's a big shooter coming off the ice. Right now, we're going to see the Schmaltz line come out to finish this power play. Pass too far ahead. Tucker Pullman couldn't bring it in. Cleared by the Wolverines. Minute gone in the penalty. Besser couldn't tip it in. Michael Downing was there for Michigan. And the puck sent back down. And North Dakota will have to try again. 45 to go on the penalty. Schmaltz, far side, nice pass to Pullman. Takes it in deep, throws it in on goal. Racine calmly steers that aside. Shot couldn't clear the zone. Here's Kajula. Feeds Schmaltz. Back to Pullman at the point. Over to Stetcher. 
Coleman fires, tipped in front, but Kajula couldn't get it past Racine. We see the Michigan penalty kill. They're trying to push down the walls. They don't, they don't want to give away that big shot from the point. Justin Selman got caught out of position there. Besser stick handling, fires on Racine. Couldn't catch him leaning. Puck thrown to the corner. Michigan fans looking for a penalty. Mott was thrown to the ice. No call from the point. Stetcher feeds inside. Attempted feet outside. Knocked away. Still gotten in deep. Kajula again with the puck. Cycles behind. Besser shot blocked. DeYoung was there. 21 for Michigan. Shot through a screen. The blocker kicked it away from Racine. Wraparound try. Racine is there again to tie it up as the penalties expired. Michigan goaltender Steve Racine has been on the job. The senior is getting it done so far. Racine, who has stopped 22 shots already in this period. Well, he's looked really confident, carrying over a great performance from last night. His rebound control has been fabulous. Goalie coach Steve Shields, he's got to like that. He's swallowing pucks, directing them out of the areas that are dangerous against these top skilled forwards for North Dakota. Offensive zone faceoff for North Dakota. Draw one by Michigan, but turn back over to North Dakota. Cycled back in deep by Luke Johnson. Pagansky behind the net, tips it away. Brett Gardner, back to Pagansky. Back to Johnson. Defended well there, though, by Carla Martin for Michigan. Now the Wolverines try to break out again. Connor, Comfer, and, Comfer and Mott are on for Michigan. Here's Kyle Connor, the leading scorer in the nation. Tries to flip it back around, defended away there. And Johnson will clear the zone for North Dakota. North Dakota defense doing a great job swarming them right inside the blue line, not giving them much to look at. What they need to do, they need to get pucks deep behind the defense, make them turn and go after it. And a shot in off the boards will be tied up by Cam Johnson for a faceoff with 3.02 to go. The NCAA Frozen Four is heading to Tampa, Florida. The action begins Thursday, April 7th at 5 Eastern here on ESPN2. And for more information on the 2016 NCAA Frozen Four, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Both of these two teams have seen the Frozen Four a lot. No stranger where they are right now. They've both played in a lot of big games, big programs, very well respected. There is no doubt as to why both these teams are here. What a great matchup. Icing called against North Dakota. Red Berenson looking to take his team back to the Frozen Four. As is Brad Berry, the North Dakota coach. Two powerhouse programs. Along with Denver, who's tied for second with North Dakota, the two teams that have won more national championships than any other. Nine times for Michigan, seven for North Dakota. 2.45 to go, first period. A period offensively dominated by North Dakota, but Michigan has not yielded yet. Racine will tie that one up as it comes back off the backboards and deflects up to his crease. There are the numbers. I'm not all that fond of the phrase blue bloods, but these are two blue blood programs in college hockey. And the only reason I'm not all that fond of it is because one team here wears green and I don't want to hear from their fans that just using the phrase blue bloods was somehow tilted in some direction, you know. So Zach Wierenski, Columbus Blue Jackets draft pick, who has had a couple of crucial goals for his team in the Big Ten Championship game and in yesterday's win over Notre Dame. Well, he really has the ability to take a game over his skills offensively, puck moving. He's smooth. Even when he gets beat, you don't realize it because his stride is so smooth. He recovers. What a tremendous player he is for this Wolverine team. He needs to have a big game this evening for the Wolverines to come out on the right side of this. Extra Danks, who had the only penalty of the period so far, flipped it in deep. North Dakota quickly clears, but the pass went a little bit too far. And now Sure will dump the puck in. 
Get Julia Schmaltz and Besser on for North Dakota. Selman, Nieves, and Kyle coming on for Michigan. Great short support there. No, North Dakota, they use each other. They support each other so well. Great puck-moving group they have on the back end. Gets it right into the forward's hands. Kyle to Nieves. They break in with speed. Nieves flips it out in front. Rebound saved by Johnson. Cam Johnson stopped the point blank shot. Here's the transition back the other way. Michigan able to take the puck away. Now Nieves back again. Works to that far side. This time stops. Well defended. Transition one more time. Off and running through the neutral zone into the offensive zone. Save. Score! Drake Kajula transition. And the first goal of the game with a minute to go in the period. Drake Kajula with his game-breaking ability, a turnover for Booney Evans. He's gonna want that one back. And Drake Kajula, he comes up the ice, takes a hard spill with the official celebrating. What speed by Drake Kajula to separate, go in, find his own rebound. And the North Dakota Fighting Hawks are fired up. It was Troy Stetcher who made the pass to Kajula. And so with a minute left in the period, giving up that goal, One big blow for the Wolverines period. unless they can One equalize minute. here. And Troy Stetcher, he's so important, his puck moving ability, similar to Wierenski. He gets involved in the offense, but he makes a lot of great defensive plays, no, underrated with his stick. Nice kick pass. Here's Kyle Connor. Can't get through the North Dakota defense. Absorbs the hit, kicks the puck over to his teammate. That was Mott. Mott gets stripped. And Johnson clears for North Dakota. Nice tip on the bounce by Gardner to get the puck in deep. Paganski chases against Sacconi for Michigan. Sacconi wins the fight. Mott flips it back out. Comfer, blind pass, but hits Mott in stride. Mott met heavily by the North Dakota defense. Puck in front, loose. Connor couldn't get a stick on it. And it's sticked away to the corner. Last seconds, Keaton Thompson does not get a shot away. A period completely dominated by North Dakota, shot-wise. A period where Michigan's defense was up to the task all the way through until a minute six remained in the period when North Dakota got the go-ahead goal and they'll lead at the end of one, one to nothing. Now to the studio for our intermission report. Here are Matt Schick and Dave Starman. Welcome back to the 2016 NCAA Hockey Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual. Ready for the start of the second period in the Midwest Region Final. North Dakota with a late first period goal to lead Michigan by a score of one to nothing. So as we look ahead, Colby Cohen, 2009 Most Outstanding Player for the BU Terriers with us. As we look ahead, not being able to get into the offensive zone is what caused the Michigan turnover that scored the goal the other end. The areas right around the offensive blue line and the defensive blue line, you've got to be careful against this North Dakota team here. We're going to see a turnover by Boone Nieves off a great gap by Troy Stetcher, and we're going to see four Michigan players trapped behind the puck. This is a no-no against a speedy team like North Dakota, and Drake Kajula, he takes the puck. I love Love the little toe drag, we see it there. He changes the angle of the puck. He goes for the shot, and then... Nice hit by the ref. The ref lays him <laughs> out. They give the ref a little bump on the top of the helmet. Those guys are having fun down there. So that inability to get the puck into the offensive zone is why shots on goal were 24 to eight in favor of North Dakota in that period, and scoring chances were 20 to seven in favor of North Dakota in that period. And... Uh, Certainly one of the things that the Wolverines would uh, have been talking about and have to adjust to in their locker room before coming out for this second period. Gardner clears for North Dakota. 
And it'll go for icing and a quick turnover. So the goal scorer for North Dakota was their alternate captain, Drake Kajula, the senior from Ontario. And uh, he is a good one. The thing I love most about him is every time you look up, he's winning battles along the walls. You pair that with his offensive ability. What a threat he is out there, 200 feet of the ice. So after the icing, North Dakota goes for a change. Meanwhile, here comes JT Comfer, drops it off, could not connect with Kyle Connor. Turnover back the other way. We're we just talking about that into the slot. Shot by Besser, misses the mark to the right under some pressure from back checking Michigan. Now a shot through, and Mott couldn't find a way to get a stick on the puck and corral it. And a stoppage and some extracurriculars with the sticks in the arms in the far corner. You've got to be careful as the junior captain, as he pointed out to me, turns a puck over inside and he starts the rush, a three on two for North Dakota. Racine comes out, great sliding defensive play by Michigan. If you look at some of the uh, stats from the first period, uh, come from Mott and Connor, the big line for Michigan. Uh, we're limited to two shots on goal. Kyle Connor did not have any shots on goal in that first period. However, remember back to their game yesterday against Notre Dame, the Irish shut out that line for almost the entire game. And then in the third period, here they came late in the going and ended up getting the overtime winner. Well, you have to credit this North Dakota defense. They've got six guys who can skate. They're big. They move the puck well. A threat, making it a five-man attack and a smothering defense. Here's the second line for the Wolverines. Applying a little bit of offensive zone pressure as Ledoux couldn't get the clear for North Dakota. Now Kajula will manage to flip it out. And coming away with it, Tucker Pullman. Couldn't control going into the zone. Here comes Michigan back through the zone. Justin Selman up the near side tries to hit in the middle. And just out ahead of Wierenski who had jumped up into the play. Good stick at the defensive line by Cutler Martin for the Wolverines. Broke up the rush for North Dakota. Wierenski rebounds, or regroups rather, behind his own net. Tip into the zone deep by Brendan Warren. On for Michigan, 11. The Wolverines can't corral any offensive zone possession time. They'll try again as Martin dumps it in deep one more time. Great play there by Joel Janet Tweenen winning the battle, taking a hit to make a play. You have to do that in college hockey. You've got a guy bearing down on you, but all you need to do is ramp that puck up over your stick, advance it, another zone out of the dangerous areas. Faceoff will be deep in the North Dakota offensive zone. Offensive zone faceoffs always an opportunity. A lot of these teams with their practiced and planned plays set pieces if you will Johnny Simonson to try and take the draw here for North Dakota Shaw keeps it in at the point Danks on the far side is able to get it out and that will be a hand pass as uh, Keaton Thompson reached down to keep it in front of him and it bounced right to one of his teammates Tuesday on ESPN, the NIT semifinals from Madison Square Garden, BYU and Valpo at 7 Eastern. Then George Washington and San Diego State, the nightcap. Both games streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Face-off win for North Dakota. They'll try the breakout. Gersich defended there. Kept in by Allen at the point. Danks taps it down into the far corner. Chase there. Big hit behind the net. Penalty coming up. Danks is going to go again. Signal is cross-checking. Two penalties in the game. He's got both of them. Well, you've got to keep your elbows and your hands down. You can't make contact with the guy's head flying in there. He's going to go to the box again. Michigan's not putting themselves in a great spot here. They can't keep going to the box. A lot of talent. They're coming out with the Johnson unit. Johnson, he'll float around. He'll play both positions. He is their shooter. 
Thought the initial signal was cross-checking. Boarding is the penalty. So Danks off for a second time and already up 1-0. Here comes the North Dakota power play back at work. Locked and a chance going the other way. Mott fights his way through. Couldn't get uh, control of the puck with enough space to do something with it. And back the other way come North Dakota. Penalties coming up. An interference call. And Keaton Thompson is not happy. He's the only one going to the box. He felt like they should have taken both the play behind the play. He starts with a big hit. They're going to keep with the extra confrontation. You know the old saying, Alan, they always get the last guy who jumps in. It's like being a little brother. You take the last shot, and that's what happened. Yeah, puck, uh, puck was long gone, and the penalty came after that replay ended. Basically, the two of them were there wrestling, and they both ended up on the ice, but uh, Thompson will be the one with the last violation, if you will. So uh, four on four skating here for a minute. Here's Kyle Connor looking for some room. Feeds it out in front. Comfort couldn't put it home. Shot for the point by DeYoung. Way wide and high of the mark. Out the other way, here's Besser. Kajula's on the far side, rebound in his direction, sticked away from in front of the net. North Dakota hit the post! The quick turnaround shot by Tucker Pullman hit the iron. Off of Racine's glove, play will stay alive, net is off the mooring. Has a little wrestling going on behind the play. Saw Drake Kajula wind up hitting the back of the net and knocking the net from its moorings. And Kyle Connor using his speed, he tucks it under the defenseman stick. A very hard play to defend. Then we come right back down the other end. Dink right off the crossbar. Tucker Pullman. Steven Racine in the right position. Goalie's best friend. That crossbar keeping this game at 1-0 for North Dakota. So there'll be just a little bit of time differential at the uh, end of the first penalty when Michigan will have a power play. Be about 25 seconds worth or so. Comfer tips that puck right back in on his own goaltender, and it'll be tied up for another faceoff as some more um, disagreement happens in front of the net. So North Dakota with the win over Northeastern. Michigan with the overtime winner over Notre Dame. They play here for the chance to fill in the uh, first line in the Frozen Four bracket for down in Tampa. Face-off win for Nieves over Johnson. 25, 24 seconds to go in the Danks penalty before Michigan will go up on the power play. We're four aside here for now. Turnover back the other way. Here's Besser. Got a man streaking toward the net. Good stick there in the way, though, on the Michigan defense. And the tar turnover goes back the other way. Selman. Played hard in the far corner by Pullman. Puck hit the, uh, looked like the door on the penalty box. Skipped away. The back pass by Besser. And there were blue shirts there in the way between himself and Johnson. So the brief Michigan power play on now. Here's Nieves. Chased all the way around the net to Stetcher. Feeds it out. Wierenski in deep. Five seconds to go on the power play. Wierenski into the slot. Turns and fires. Sticked away to the corner. And we're back even at five aside. Here's Comfort. Top of the circle. Rolls into the slot. Scores!
And JT Comfort getting his team on the board, giving the Michigan faithful watching at the Brown Jug something to celebrate about. He gets the puck and he sees all this open ice in the slot. You don't have to tell that man to shoot twice. We're going to see dragging it to the middle, looking like a defenseman back there, and snipes one over the top corner through a screen. JT Comfort with his 15th goal of the season, and we're tied at one. Big, big moment in the game, that feels like to me. JT Comfort playing with a lot of emotion out here. We could see it in that interview. He's got that eye of the tiger. He's going to put this team on his back if he has to. He did it last night in the third period. He really stepped it up, and we're seeing it here in the second period for Michigan. So a whistle and an offside call. And that takes us to the under-15 timeout. One apiece. J.D. Comfort evens it up for the Wolverines. The NCAA Hockey Championship, presented by Northwestern Mutual, is brought to you by Scott's. It's good out here. Michigan scored with a minute six seconds left in the, excuse me, North Dakota scored with a minute six seconds left in the first period. Michigan has tied it up five and a half into the second. JT Comfer, he realizes that there's all this open ice and he decides, I'm going to take this one on my own. Justin Selman with a great screen. You see Mott in front of the goalie too. Justin Selman, an underrated player for this Michigan team, plays with great energy, has no quit, always a second effort. So JT Comfer, who had the game-winning goal yesterday in overtime for the Wolverines, has the equalizer here in the second. Play out front, sticked at the side of the net hard a couple of times, but not giving up the post was Steven Racine. And we have reached that, um, that point in the game where after every whistle, the linesmen are racing in and having to separate players. But then... In a game where your entire season's dreams and hopes of winning the national championship can be continued or ended, you'd expect that kind of intensity. Alex Kyle gets the puck deep into the North Dakota zone. Selman there on the forecheck, kicks it free, nobody there. Colton Sanderson will chase it down for North Dakota. Can't win possession. Shot for the point. Knocked away. And the puck tipped into the Michigan zone. Good play there. Looking at it. Turns, fires. Where's the puck? It's under Racine. That was Bryn Chizik with the extra effort in the offensive zone for North Dakota. You gotta be careful here if you're Michigan when you're playing with the puck moving back towards your net. We see Nolan DeYoung lose his edge, but he stays in the net and he plays a little bit of goalie. It looks like he's a little kid playing knee hockey there in the hotel hallways, sticking around, helping out the goaltender, Steven Racine for Michigan. Gotta do what you gotta do, right? Shot from Red Gardner, didn't get through. Here's Kyle Connor. Loses the puck. It's defenseman Wierenski there to help him out. Again, a breakout attempt by the Wolverines denied. Now Wierenski stick handles his way out of the zone, but he's played well there. And that's going to go for an icing. And a face-off back in the defensive end for Michigan. And North Dakota, they came this close to taking a lead here, but Nolan DeYoung keeping his legs, sticking around the net, helping out his goaltender. That was a close one, Alan. That was a very close one. I don't think Coach Berenson feels great about that one. He had to make sure he didn't play that with his hands, too, when he was in the crease. Shot through a screen, tipped twice in front. Pagansky got a stick on it. Racine got the puck. Pagansky got roughed up and continues to get roughed up a little bit by the Wolverines. Oh. 
Austin Pagansky, the St. Louis Blues draft pick out of St. Cloud, Minnesota. Played his junior hockey for Tri-City in the USHL. Evans wins that face off. Michigan clears his own. Selvin tries to tap it deep. Can't get it. Played away by the North Dakota defense. Kajula gets that one in deep. Morensky spins it around. And out the far side it comes. Michigan with a nice entry. Swinging it across in front. Morensky couldn't find one of his teammates. North Dakota quickly back the other way with numbers. Michigan catching up on the back check. The attempted drag. Shot blocked. Here's Kachula. Out to the point. Osmus fires. Shot blocked by Kyle. And the net is off. It's moorings as uh, some heavy play between Kajula and Morensky down by the Michigan crease. And North Dakota doing what they do best, transitioning off of a turnover. They come down Drake Kajula. We see that drag move again. Good play there by the Michigan defender, getting his points involved. We see Gage Osmus stepping into one, but a great block. This time of year, Alan, the blocks are important. They mount up. It's the little plays out there that win you playoff games. You can't save anything for next game, because if you don't win this one, there isn't a next game. Shot thrown toward the net. Trevor Olsen steered away easily by the side of the cage and Steve Racine. Still offensive zone pressure from North Dakota. Shaw keeps it in, cycles it back around. Gets past Simonson, far side, skips away from Gersich. And it's cleared out, quickly turned back around. And faded back in by Olsen. This North Dakota forecheck has been fierce the whole game long. The home run pass attempt tipped in by Selman. Wolverines go for a change. North Dakota transitions back quickly the other way. Clear pass across the other side. Good save by Racine. Thrown through the crease. Back out in front. Just a blue jersey there. From the point, Pullman keeps it in. Jenna Tweenan fights for it at the blue line. Sticked out. Danks can't get it deep into the North Dakota zone. Now Ledoux will bring it back out to center ice. Again, into the zone, Jana Tweenan. Dumps it out in front, nobody there. Back to the point, Ledoux. Brings it out in front of the net. Lots of conflict there, lots of uh, traffic there. Chizik skates far side, throws it back of the net. Sanderson couldn't get a tip. Good pressure here, shot off the side of the net, clear to the glass. Allen can't clear for the Wolverines. Back into the zone. Cutler Martin's been stuck out on the ice for a little over a minute and a half. He's going to get to the bench for a change. No, he's not, because that's an ice. So he, he's going to have to turn out. Michigan may look to use their timeout here to get some rest for their players, especially the defenders who've been caught out on the ice. North Dakota with some fancy passing coming in and look at Steven Racine getting across the crease squared up to the shooter goaltender coach really has got to feel good about the play of Steven Racine so far looking confident out of his three squared up so Michigan had partly Gone through uh, a line change, one third anyway, before the whistle. Comfort is out there, but the other two guys from the fourth line are still on the ice. Now they clear the puck. Allen still not able to get off as North Dakota quickly goes back the other way. And now the Wolverines complete the line change with the puck in their own end. Comfort gets it out, hits Connor just inside the red line. Connor into the zone. Mott trying to follow him in. Connor taken down. And North Dakota clears it out. Comfort throws it back the other way. Gage Osmus has the puck taken from him. Here's Connor, flips it up, saved by what's been a very inactive Cam Johnson this period. Michigan not getting many shots on him at all. Stetcher, far side, shot comes. And a penalty coming up on the Wolverines. 
It's going to be Michael Downing who's going to head to the box and set up a North Dakota power play. Halfway through the second period, tied at one. Loser goes home, winner goes to the Frozen Four. The final college hockey game of the season. Right here, right now. The Terriers, a 3-2 lead. Breezy back, in it goes. O'Connor catches. Oh, and then! Can the Friars get their first national championship? And a shot, score! There are no words to adequately describe the feeling right now. It's the biggest moment in Providence College hockey history. The first line in that Frozen Four field to be filled in here in Cincinnati, North Dakota and Michigan tied at one halfway through the game. And now North Dakota going on the power play. So Michael Downing in the box with a Michigan penalty. Michigan. North Dakota with a chance. Clearing pass quickly made there. As Max Short, he chases down deep. Troy Stetcher drops it off. Now Kajula will pick it up, dump it back off. Stetcher will start the North Dakota breakout. Just out of the reach of Pullman. Swatted back the other way. And that first pass on a power play breakout when you're the man with the puck, very important. You've got to beat someone, get you the rush odd going up the ice. Wrenski defends there against Schmaltz. They cycle it in deep. Drake Kajula, who has the North Dakota goal. Back to his point, Pullman, Kajula, Stetcher, and Schmaltz there together. Schmaltz will cycle it deep. Kajula tries to get it back out front. Boca defending there well for Michigan. And the puck will be cleared the length of the ice by J.T. Kumpfer. And Michigan will get a defensive pair change. Comfer's really stepped up his level of play in this period, hasn't he? He really seems like he does not want this Michigan team to go home. Nolan DeYoung, another one of the Michigan defensemen, the junior from Victoria, British Columbia, makes that clear. Too many white shirts on top of each other as they try to go into the offensive zone, and a whistle and an offside. Tonight at 11, after NBA Coast to Coast, it's Sports Center at Night with Nicole Briscoe and Kevin Connors. They'll have all the men's Elite Eight, Women's Sweet 16 highlights, NHL, Spring Training, NBA, and of course, NCAA Hockey Tournament highlights. Streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app Sports Center at Night tonight. 38, 38 seconds, excuse me, left to go in the North Dakota power play. Haven't had much going on this one yet. By the way, uh, both goalies not really been uh, tested much in this period either. Prior to the beginning of the power play, just uh, four shots for Michigan in this period, none on goal for North Dakota. So Red Berenson's between period adjustments worked out fairly well for this second so far. Far side, Johnson shot blocked before it got through to the goal. Back to the point again. Thompson fires in. Knocked away. Johnson again. Into the slot. Gardner's shot blocked in front. Didn't get through. Comfort couldn't clear. Johnson keeps it in at the point. Fires at the net over the top of everything. Missed. Ledoux has it. Penalties up. Back to even strength. Shot in front. There's a glove and a stick on the ice. They have been uh, retrieved. Michigan into the zone. Shot missed. Danks, who's gotten two Michigan penalties in this game, trying to make up for it there. Danks again with a solid wrap into the boards. This Michigan fourth line keeping the North Dakota team pinned down in their zone. Dexter Danks, he throws his weight around. He's a big body forward, but he has a lot of skill. Not your traditional fourth line player. Janet Tweenen not able to take the bounce to his stick. Continues to fight for the puck in the corner. Played well there, though. Nicholas Boca on him. Puck to Wierenski. Back to Boca. Michigan tries to break. Danks crosses the line. Feeds far corner. Alex Kyle on 23. Chases. Played the other way, though. By Hayden Shaw for North Dakota. Kept in by Michigan. Kyle will feed it deep. 
North Dakota able to get the clear out. And Michael Downing is able to clear his own zone for Michigan. Knocked down at the line, tipped back in deep. Nice spin around play by John Simonson. And six minutes to go in this um, heavily contested second period. Brendan Warren was able to get the puck deep. Michigan not able to retrieve, though. Out quickly come North Dakota. The pass skips over a stick. That'll go for icing. And the face-off back into the Michigan offensive end. Well, both teams have done a great job locking it down. One of the better chances we've seen this period out of Dexter Denks. Flips the puck over the defenseman stick, gets a shot off. He moves laterally there to buy himself one or two steps away from Keaton Thompson, who's got a very long stick. Great offensive chance for Michigan. See how out of uh, balance the first period shots on goal are. They're actually still heavily in favor of North Dakota, but not nearly of the quality scoring chance that they had in the first. Pass back to the point. Aaron of Cutler Martin. A stat these teams look at, not just shots, it's grade A chances. They don't live and die on a shot count. It's the shots that come from in the good areas on the ice. Here's Kyle who took the long pass, breaks in, swings in front of the goal, couldn't get it to go. Cam Johnson held his ground. Now back the other way, Besser. Far side, Kajula was able to hold up and stay on side, though he had to drag his leg so far. He lost all of his momentum, and the breakup, the uh, breakout broke up. Schmaltz. Nieves defending on him there. Now Kajula tried to feed Schmaltz, comes back out of it from the circle. Stick in the way of his attempt to get it out to the point. And Michigan will try a late breakout. Good glove stops, turns the momentum back the other way. That's going to go for icing as the uh, batting around in the neutral zone ended up with an errant pass on the behalf of Michigan. And the ice is tilting a great chance here for Alex Kyle taking it to the net. You need to lower your shoulder like he does and get to the net. The big strong defense in North Dakota, they're not going to give you a free look. You got to do it the dirty way. Face off win for Johnson. But cycle, Pullman throws it in. Wide of the mark, nobody there for the tip. Johnson tries to keep it in at the point. Shot from the far side. Wide of the mark by Tucker Pullman. Here's Johnson. Again, wheels, fires right into Racine. And he'll tie it up for a faceoff with 4.26 to go. What an exciting game this has been. We're tied at one. Still in the second period. Cincinnati U.S. Bank Arena, where North Dakota and Michigan are tied at one apiece. Game with a very tight back and forth feel to it. Could be leading to some extra hockey. Both these teams with experience at that. North Dakota winning in overtime. Well, when you get in these overtime situations, you're sitting on the bench, you're holding your breath. It's like being a fan of the game when you're on the bench, Alan. You're like, holding your breath, waiting for something to happen, and then all of a sudden you get these bouncers. We saw North Dakota get that one. That was a pretty goal for an overtime goal right there. That was very under control. That was two years ago in this building in the regional final. Michigan winning yesterday in overtime over Notre Dame to get to this regional final tonight. Another pretty goal yesterday, a tic-tac-toe play behind the back pass we saw in overtime. These two teams have played 10 times before in the uh, NCAA tournament excuse me, uh, 10 times before, and four of them, they've gone to overtime. Four of the last 10 times they've played. I can't read my own writing. Four of the last 10 times they've played, they've played overtime, but none of them have been in the NCAA tournament. Third time's a charm. That's what they say, right, Alan? Don't try this at home. I'm a trained <laughs> professional. Comfort feeds into the slot. Could not collect it, Kyle Connor, and get a shot on net. Here's Luke Johnson with the puck, takes his time, flips it in, gets it in past Downing. Michigan will regroup behind its net. Boca feeds back the other side to Downing. And he'll just flip it up high. Back to Tucker Pullman, right back out of the zone. Here's Comfort. Kicks it in deep, tries to slip Pullman. Pullman played the body. Nice slip play. Puck knocked down. Calderon on, but couldn't keep it in the zone. Here comes North Dakota. They'll flip it in. Oh, nice play around the side to Bryn Chiswick. 
He'll keep it deep. Defended there by Joseph Ciccone from Michigan. And a couple of his friends. And Brendan Warren will come away with the puck. Feed it ahead. Cooper Marodi tries to feed it in. Nice play away there by Troy Stetcher. North Dakota changes directions. Ciccone out from behind his own net. Feeds Calderon. Still two players down well behind the play. That's what the fans are hollering about. The official was standing right over them, though. Shot from the point. Misses wide. Brendan Warren high off the glass. Clears it out. This is DeYoung for Michigan. Taps it up the boards. Osmus was there. They knock it around and scrum at center ice. Allen will come away from it. Get it in for the Wolverines. Fires on net. Save Johnson. Puck tick bounces around. Good effort to get the puck in the corner. Danks. Slam to the boards. Shot from the point. Saved by Johnson. He'll tie it up with two minutes and nine seconds to go in the second period. And one of the things that makes this North Dakota team so dangerous, their transition, we see... Troy Stetcher with a smooth play up, bump pass off the wall in the neutral zone, getting the puck behind the Michigan defense, going to work, grinding them down. One of the things Coach Barry talked to us about, making them a successful team transition. Nieves wins the draw over Besser. Shot though, tipped away. Hayden Shaw clears for North Dakota. Kajula comes out with it. They come in two on one. Now a Michigan defender gets back. Schmaltz couldn't get the shot off. Downing back checking for Michigan. Into the slot. Puck still loose from the point. Shot whistled wide. Hayden Shaw missed the mark. Here's Besser. Looking for some space and looking to create time. Feeds it across a beautiful saucer pass. Shaw threw it back in front. Nobody was there. Downing fires around. Puck hits a stanchion. Trickles all the way back to Kajula at the point. He's got time. Kyle was defending him there. Flipped wide. Don't think Racine saw that through the screen. Besser tries to come back out in front. Now Schmaltz again feeds into traffic. Big scramble here with less than a minute and a half to go in the period. And finally a clearing pass as Downing gets a stick on the puck and gets it out of the zone. Kajula quickly turns around, finds Besser, far blue line. He's got a man in front, Johnson, but he couldn't get it through. Nice defensive play by Nolan DeYoung. Michigan tries to quickly come back the other way. Shot misses the far side of the net with a minute to go in the period. And a whistle and a stoppage of play with 57.4 to go. And a great chance by North Dakota. Drake Takula bringing the puck up the ice. Nick Schmaltz with his slick skill plays leads to a great shift for North Dakota. A momentum building shift. The ice has tilted a little for Michigan this period. But North Dakota, they bend and they don't break. Face off win for North Dakota. They clear it out. Wierenski trails back. Feeds it across to Boca for Michigan. Turnover in the slot. Johnson scores! They scored in the last minute of the first period. They score in the last minute of the second, does North Dakota. And Luke Johnson taking advantage of the turnover, snapping one home. Michigan can't get out of their own way. And Luke Johnson, we talked about his shot earlier, snaps one home, the toe dragon shot. He changes the angle of the puck, doesn't give Steven Racine a chance to get out and track that one. Huge goal for North Dakota's momentum. As you said, Alan, the second time they scored with under a minute, we got an exciting one on here. Minute six seconds to go in the first period they scored. Just over 45 seconds to go in the second they score. And it's two to one North Dakota. North Dakota goal, scored by number 27, Luke Johnson. Johnson unassisted and a whistle and a face off with 28.5 to go. And 
watch Luke Johnson change the angle of the puck right here. We're going to see it. Just a really subtle move. I know his father, Steve Johnson, he's watching at home, loves that, taught him how to shoot. Former North Dakota All-American. 20 seconds to go. Michigan tries to get something going deep down low. Feet out in front. Mock shot knocked off the side of the net. Stetcher there. Takes the hit after he gets rid of it. Michigan keeps it in. Comfort feeds across from the point. Shot blocked. Gardner gave up the body on that one. Six seconds to go. Far side. Comfort again. Feeds Boca. Throws it at the net. Saved by Johnson. He'll tie it up with eight tenths of a second to go in the period. So eight tenths of a second basically means you try and take a shot on net from the faceoff circle. Well, they're going to try to get a righty in there for the draw. There isn't enough time to win it back for a play right now. Comfort telling his players to line up on the hash. He's going to try to knock this one as it drops right at the net. Gets it through, kicked away, and the horn goes to end the period. Another interesting moment in what's been a very interesting two periods. Well, we have a pattern. North Dakota scores at the end of the period. Can Michigan keep the pattern going and score at the beginning of the next? At the end of two, two to one, North Dakota over Michigan. As we head to the studio for the intermission report, here are Matt Schick and Dave Starman. Settling in for the third period as we welcome you back to the 2016 NCAA Hockey Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual. Teams returning to the ice, U.S. Bank Arena Cincinnati with North Dakota leading Michigan by a score of 2-1. to one. Alan Bestwick with Colby Cohen, 2009's most outstanding player for national champions of that year, Boston University. So you're Michigan. First period was all North Dakota. You played him evenly statistically in the second period, and yet you still come out of the locker room trailing by one for the third. How you feeling? Michigan still has another level. We didn't see it yesterday. We haven't yet seen it. They're such a skilled group. They have another level that they can reach as a team. The thing that they have to stop is the turnovers because Michigan turnovers have led to both North Dakota goals. Well, they're shooting themselves in the foot. We see a bit of a mishandle here, and it's going to end up on Luke Johnson, a pure shooter stick. JT Comfort, the junior captain, with the mishap and the turnover. And just like that, it ends up right in the back of his net. So look at the numbers, first period to second period. Again, the Wolverines played North Dakota much more evenly yet gave up the goal in the last minute of the period and start the final 20, trailing by 2-1. to one. Winner goes to the Frozen Four in Tampa. Loser's season is finished. 20 minutes, potentially, from settling that. Though one never knows. In these closely played games, it could be more. Puck fired in for the point. Save, Racine. Paganski got a stick on a rebound shot. Went nowhere. Here comes Mott through the center. Four white shirts surrounding him, though. Puck will go back the other way. Here's Kyle Connor picking it up. Over to Mott. Into the offensive zone. Tries to turn the corner. Flips a backhander. Goes wide of Cam Johnson. Little exchange of neutral zone play. Now Besser comes in. Into the zone, stops, looks for help, finds Schmaltz, and it just went under the toe of his stick. Kajula fires Racine. Deflects that one away, and it goes up into the netting, and will get a face-off in the offensive zone for North Dakota. Well, if you look at both of these teams' top lines, talked about how the first line for Michigan didn't really get going in the first period. They did in the second. In fact, uh, JT Comfort had the goal for Michigan. So starting to get rolling. And we'll see how much time they spend playing against each other or if they're able to generate a few more chances here in this third period on both sides. For now, Alex Kyle feeds it ahead. Boomy Evans dumps it deep for Michigan. North Dakota retrieves. Troy Stretcher feeds it out. Lorensky back, chased by Besser. Zach Wierenski flips it high off the glass, stays in. Gage Osmus flips it back deep behind the net. And a chance here into the slot on his backhand. Spins around. Kajula. Racine wasn't fooled.
Besser muscled off the puck. Puck tapped out and driven right back in. From the point, a drive, Stetcher right into the chest protector of Steve Racine and a whistle. And Drake Kajula, who's already made his mark on this game once with a spin around shot. The lateral movement makes it hard for Steven Racine to track, but he does a good job staying out on his crease. Good save by Steven Racine. Sanderson wins the draw. Back to the point. Thompson throws it into traffic. Skipped off a defender's leg over to the corner. Banks taps it in and chases. North Dakota quickly turns back around the other way, up through center ice. Colton Sanderson chips it in, chases himself. Behind the net, dead out front. Went right under the stick of Max Short. Calderon dumps it deep. That's going to be an icing. He was astride on his own side of the center red line. And the faceoff will come back into the Michigan and to the rink. And a great job by the North Dakota defender. Keaton Thompson holding the line, forcing that icing. Allen, it's little things that this North Dakota defense does that separates them and makes them special. Shot from the far side. Gloved and uh, corralled into the chest by Racine easily. And uh, the extracurriculars begin early in this third period right in front of the Michigan net. Not that you would expect them to be any calmer in the third period of a close game where the loser's season is done. Gardner wins the faceoff for North Dakota. Put back in deep by Luke Johnson. Boganski tries the backhander. Gardner's got it behind the net. He'll cycle again. Boganski shook off the defender downing. Gets it out toward the point. Tucker Pullman flips it back in deep, skips over the stick. And the net going to be knocked off the mooring as Pogansky got tangled up with Michael Downing. And Austin Pogansky with it. Collision here with Michael Downing sends him flying into the net. Austin Pagansky is 6'2, 205 pound forward, played in the USHL, a big bodied forward for this North Dakota team. JT Comfort to take the draw against Luke Johnson. Johnson wins it. Gardner has it. Couldn't get a shot away, was checked nicely there by Kyle Connor. Connor doesn't get that pass. Johnson gets it. Shot in front. Bounces off the Michigan defender Downing. Who breaks his stick in the collision. Johnson did with Downing. Connor feeds it back. Nice no look pass to Mott from the shot. Fire saved by Cam Johnson. Puck still loose. It skitters off to the corner. Here's Kajula with it. And a three on two rush for North Dakota to Besser. With time. Sticked away. Nice play by the freshman Nicholas Boca. Great stick there by Nicholas Boca. Small and underrated play. Huge play for the Wolverines, breaking up that three on two with those three dangerous North Dakota forwards barreling into the offensive zone. Boca played well yesterday against Notre Dame, playing well again. Here's a break in. Selman, nicely defended by the captain, Gage Osmus. No icing there. Selman got a tip on the uh, deep throw. Selman and Osmus with a big collision. Puck still loose. Nieves back to the point. Martin fires, doesn't get through. Pullman sticks it away. Kyle has it, cycling around. Feeds Martin again. The wrister tipped by Nieves. Save Johnson. Puck still loose. And Kajula will fire it into the corner. And North Dakota will go for a change. Four check from Janet Tweenen is able to be avoided by Cutler Martin. Here come the Wolverines. Calderon tips it in deep, chases his own ship. Good defensive play there. Doesn't get all the way out though off Troy Stetcher. Now does. 
Still bits and pieces of stick debris laying around as Nolan DeYoung takes it and skates with it for the Wolverines. Across center ice, taken from him. Sanderson turns it back the other way. Looking for some help. Bodied off it. Michael Downing with the play. Puck tips off a stick that's going to go all the way down the ice and will be icing against Michigan. End-to-end -end action we're seeing early in this third period. Zach Wierenski getting involved in the offense, leads the rush, keeps following through to the net, takes a couple whacks at it. The puck starts coming back down. Here we see a great chance. Cutler Martin getting it at the net, creating some chaos for the Wolverines. They're going to need chaos. They're going to need to get in Cam Jansen in front of him. He's been great tonight, seeing everything. Dexter Danks is out on this third line as a hand pass will be whistled down there. Calderon had his stick broken and just hand passed the puck ahead. Faceoff will come back. Dexter Danks, 39, now playing with Cooper Marodi and Tony Calderon for the last couple of shifts. Brendan Warren had been on that line for much of the game. Stoppage here, just under 15 to go. Third period, North Dakota, 2-1 over Michigan. Back live after the hand pass, uh, miscommunication. Thought there was a media break there, not. Play is resumed, you haven't missed anything yet. Thompson has to kick it back in. There's Calderon. He'll fire it in deep, they'll go for a change. Connor Comfer and Mott come on for Michigan. Gardner, Pagansky, and Luke Johnson. On for North Dakota, Connor steals behind the net, feeds it out front. It winds up underneath of uh, either Thompson or Johnson in the crease and a whistle and a stoppage. So now we officially reach the media timeout. The NCAA Hockey Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently. And in part by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. And Quicksilver from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase, every day. The Ralph, Ralph, Ralph Engelstad Arena, the home of University of North Dakota Hockey, where they sold out 15 of their 17 home dates this year. It is a tremendous atmosphere, tremendous facility, and certainly one of the best home venues in all of college hockey. And here in Cincinnati, we play the final of the Midwest Regional with the winner between North Dakota and Michigan, Michigan getting the first spot in the Frozen Four. A lot on the line this afternoon. A spot in the Frozen Four. As you said, it's a win or go home format in this NCAA playoffs. And right now, Michigan's going to start feeling the heat. They're going to get this top line with JT Comfort out there as much as they possibly can. Connor in the shooter's position on the faceoff, but Luke Johnson won the draw. Here comes North Dakota. Pagansky will chase deep. Nicholas Boca will play him into the boards there. Lorensky. And Rhett Gardner. Great poise by Zach Wierenski, slowing things down, getting the puck into Kyle Connor's hands, giving this Michigan attack a chance to get going into the offense. Gardner will chip it out. Johnson, back checked by Connor. Turnover back the other way. Boca feeds up to Confer. Come for play well there by Johnson. Besser now onto the ice. 16 into the scrum on the far side. Connor joins in. Connor comes away with the puck only momentarily. Across to Boca. Throws the wrister in. Deflected. Sitting out front. Knocked aside. Ledoux hit it away. Tip in front. Mott couldn't redirect it toward the net. Here's Comfer. Shot to the far side. Shot in. Saved by Johnson with the blocker. And the puck back out to center ice. A little pressure here on the part of the Wolverines. Here's Mott trying to work his way through. Nice deke. Penalty here coming against North Dakota. And the whistle. And the Wolverines 
are going to find themselves with a power play trailing by one in the third. And Tyler Mott's dazzling speed leading to this penalty. The dipsy do in. You can't play with the free hand. We saw it earlier on a North Dakota penalty. And we're going to finally see a full Michigan power play. We haven't seen much of it all weekend, have we, Alan? Paul Ledoux tag for the uh, obstruction. And yes, the Michigan power play, the best in the nation, did not get given opportunities by Notre Dame yesterday. They're given one by North Dakota here. This the uh, second penalty of the game. Remember the first one, they ended up basically playing four aside for most of it. Second penalty against North Dakota here. So can the Wolverines even the game up on this power play? Here's Nieves, gets the zone. Gets the puck in deep. Selman chases. Osmus fires it back the length of the ice for North Dakota. You've got to outnumber the puck down low if you're this Michigan power play as you enter the zone. If you're going to chip the puck behind the net along the yellow, you've got to outnumber. There's always got to be more blue sweaters than white. Kyle Connor tries to gain the line. He does, but the puck knocked out of, off his stick right at the moment they entered the zone. And offside is whistled there. The NCAA Frozen Four is heading to Tampa, Florida. The action begins Thursday, April 7th at 5 p.m. Eastern, live here on ESPN2. If you'd like more information on the NCAA Frozen Four, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Minute 10 to go in the power play. Orensky chased down deep by Kajula. We'll have to regroup and go back the other way. It's Kajula and Johnson on the penalty kill for North Dakota. Connor, Comfer, and Mott. The front line for Michigan. Now it's Kyle, far side. He's also playing on this power play, taking one of the point spots along with Orensky. Alex Kyle with the puck. Gains the zone, drops it off. Mott, far side. Wierenski, tic-tac-toe play, shot, goal! JT Kupfer fires it through Cam Johnson, and we're tied at two. And JT Comfer, he's playing possessed for his team right now. Going to be the beneficiary of some tic-tac-toe passing right there, going through the box. That's knowing what you're going to do with the puck before you get a chance. A great look across, and JT Comfer with his second goal of the game. You could see the look in his eyes. Alex Cow providing the net front presence for Michigan. Assist to Connor and to Zach Wierenski. And the goal for JT Comfort ties the game at two with 11.20 to go in the third period. And North Dakota answers. Schmaltz fires it in on Racine. He'll just tie it up and take the face off. When this puck went in, Cam Johnson kind of snapped his head up like he thought maybe he should have had it. Watch the goalie's reaction. Kyle Connor, there's a reason he's as good as he is. He knew exactly what he was going to do. Any time on a power play you can break the box, it's trouble for the kill. Selman blocked the shot from the point, but Schmaltz comes away with the loose puck. Schmaltz tries to feed it across into the shot. Just missed wide. That was Keaton Thompson. Here's Shaw. Throws a wrister in, deflected in front, but it went wide. Schmaltz again. Heavy action in the corner. Saconi and Kajula were going at it. Michigan comes away with the puck. Kyle with a deke. Finds some space. Center ice. Throws it wide. Save Johnson. Rebound attempt. Couldn't go from Selman. Puck still loose. Far corner. Nieves has it. Selman is down in front of the net. Just getting to his feet for Michigan. Kyle skated over the top of a stick. Fans wanted a call. I think it was a good no call. There's Besser. Try to be patient. 
Puck skips through. Sanderson has it now for North Dakota. Dakota in the middle of a line change. Puck back at the point. And sticked away carefully out of the zone by Downing for Michigan. As the clock ticks, you can feel the tension grow in the building. Who just missed out in front. Jana Tweenan had a shot. Shot blocked from the point there. Calderon got in the way of that one. Still, North Dakota with some offensive zone pressure. Here's Gage Osmus with it deep. Back to the point. Now Stetcher on the near side. Fires it wide. Plenty of traffic in front of the net. Shot didn't go anywhere near it. Great. Stetcher intercepts the clearing pass. Cycles it back in deep. Calderon tips it back. DeYoung in heavy traffic. Michigan still not able to clear. Pullman throws it at the net. Lots of bodies in front. Puck deflects wide. Calderon has it. Skates it out for Michigan. Pass tipped down in the center ice area. I believe that was Trevor Olsen. Got a stick on that. Teams go for a change. Puck changes directions. Into the zone. Boca chases his own chip in. The defenseman in deep behind the North Dakota net. The pace in this game is really picking up. The end of a long, hard-fought weekend. Both teams really emptying out the tanks right now. We're seeing up and down hockey. Great transition game for both teams. Luke Johnson, good stick work there. Gets the puck out of the zone. It's Boganski, tips it over. Gardner, shot blocked. DeYoung tips it free. Here's Kyle Connor across the blue line. Tries to go around, defended well by Osmus. Feeds it out in front. Back into the slot, Connor shoots. Set a save there, and Connor Got a shot, but Cam Johnson saw it all the way and ties it up with 8.17 to go. And Kyle Connor and the Michigan Wolverines pouring on the pressure late in the third period. there, Colby, when they're given that Boston University Denver score. Uh, here's our scoring recap in Cincinnati. Two apiece, 8.17 to go, third period. Late goals in each of the first and second periods for North Dakota, but each time Michigan has found a way in the next period to regain the momentum and even the game up. It has been a fight for sure. And by the way, Steve Racine, the Michigan goaltender, has faced 43 shots. Cam Johnson, the North Dakota goaltender, has faced 27. There's another one. Goal! It tipped in and floated over Racine's glove. 3-2 North Dakota. Ledoux fired the shot in, and it hit a lot of things out in front, it looked like. Well, that's a huge goal for North Dakota. A low to high pass, something North Dakota does so well. And at these moments of the game, sometimes you don't need to shoot a big, high, over-the-net glove slapper. All you need, put it along the ice, hope for a tip, and there you go. Steven Racing, he couldn't pick it up on the way into the net, hit something, bounced up over the shoulder into the back of the net. Now every goal gets reviewed, and the review officials are looking to see if the puck was touched by a high stick on the way through. I couldn't see if Brett Gardner, 22, got a piece of it on its way in. That's Gardner there. And if it was, uh, when that puck came by him, his stick was well down, it looked like to me. But we'll see. The officials are looking at it now. Well, you said uh, yesterday 
uh, when we were going to overtime that at that stage in the game, any shot on goal is a good shot on goal. Well, I know we're not in overtime, but... There's a major skill of getting the puck through. This time of year, guys are giving up their bodies to block shots, and we see it here. Oh. Okay. This is where they're looking at the high stick there. That was Rhett Gardner. Did he touch that puck with the stick over his shoulders? This year, the officials do have the ability to go back and review how the puck entered the zone and look for things like, was the play offside, uh, et cetera. Well, if he does play that puck up high, which we saw him do, as long as the Michigan player touches the puck next, it negates the high stick in the neutral zone. Now, reading directly from Rule 93.4 under Video Replay Criteria in the NCAA Men's Hockey Rulebook or Hockey Rulebook, the following criteria are subject to the use of video replay to determine if a goal was scored as the direct result of a hand pass or high stick by an attacking player to a teammate or deflection off of the goalkeeper. So our referees, Chip McDonald and Bob St. Lawrence, have the final say in this. And both teams have a high stake in the outcome of this decision. And Red Berenson telling his guys, guys, regardless of the outcome here, there's still eight minutes of hockey left. We need to move forward, put this behind us. Does Gardner hit the puck? And remember, it's got to be indisputable video evidence. We are about to get the verdict as Mr. McDonald and St. Lawrence come out of the penalty box. The 3-2 North Dakota. So 7.57 to go in the game. North Dakota back on top. Michigan has been able to fight back each time. But now the time allotted to do that grows shorter. Explanation being given to Red Berenson and the Michigan coaching staff about the ruling. And we're ready for play. Actually sharing the Discussion also with Brad Berry and the North Dakota coaching staff to understand what was going on. So 3-2 North Dakota. The goal will be credited now to Rhett Gardner after the review. He did get a stick on it in the offensive zone, like I said when we were looking at it before. If that was what they were looking at, it was well below his shoulders. And so that changed the directions and allowed it to knuckle and eventually skip over Steve Racine. Uh, his uh, left-handed glove. Well, we talked talk so much about the big line with Brock Besser, the freshman for North Dakota, but it's been Luke Johnson's line. Two goals tonight for his team, really stepping up when the team needs it. The heavy line, as uh, Brad Berry calls him. So Young feeds it forward. Kyle feeds it in. Michigan goes on the chase. Stetcher hits it around. Knocked off there. Selman had the nice block on the boards. Kyle Farside gets it back to the point, but the young had started backing up because uh, Kajula was there in position to possibly intercept that. Kajula or Schmaltz, I couldn't quite see which one. Might have been Schmaltz. There's Colton Sanderson now, chips it out. Bounces off a stick. That was Wierenski's stick. Well, he gets that stick in the way and keeps the centering pass from Janet Tweenen from going into the slot. Janet Tweenen back to the point. Pullman throws it at the net. Score! Colton Sanderson tipped it in front. Colton Sanderson got lost behind the Michigan defense, and it's 4-2 North Dakota. And an absolutely impossible play for the goalie, Stephen Racine, to save. What a great tip by Colton Sanderson. 
tipping it from the wide side to the near side corner of the net. Now the refs are going to take a look at this, but great hand-eye coordination by the North Dakota forward. But Alan, again, we talked about it. Throwing a puck at the net looks like a harmless wrist shot. And there you see a great tip redirection. No chance for the Michigan goaltender. So same thing, you'll check and see uh, if he got it, where he got it with the stick. So Chip McDonald and Bob St. Lawrence over having a look at this. Colton Sanderson for North Dakota is quite the story. He is a senior, he's just not played a whole lot in the last few years. But he has scored now six goals this year. They've all come in the last 16, now 17 games. And he's third on the team in scoring in that time. This one's going to be close. His Wait. stick was up there. Was his stick below the level of the crossbar when he hit the puck? You see him bring his stick in a downward motion. I think that's a good goal. I think it's going to be a good goal, too. Because he brought his stick down when he touched it, it looked under the crossbar. The officials are taking a good long look at it. I think this is going to be a good goal, and what a great tip that was. So the teams take a minute, await the verdict. We check it again. Watch the, the relevance of the stick to the crossbar when it touches the puck. Very close. It's a very close one. Indisputable video evidence needed. The call, the call on the ice was a goal. So it's going to have to be indisputable for them to overturn this call. So we wait to see what the officials come up with. If that is a goal, that's a massive, massive gap this late in the game for North Dakota now to have on Michigan. Granted, Michigan, with a very high-powered offense, has shown the ability to roar back from behind, particularly in the Big Ten championship game. And a good wrister there by Tucker Pullman, the active, smooth skating, big right-handed defenseman. Just the angle. getting the puck at the net. We have a good look at it there. His stick looks under the crossbar when he touches the puck. All right, well, officials take their time to make uh, sure because it is such a crucial moment in a crucial game. And we await the uh, verdict from Chip McDonald and Bob St. Lawrence as they review this potential uh, insurance goal, if you will, for North Dakota. Well, what a turn of events we've seen here today in the last five to seven minutes. Here they come. Good goal. <laughs> Colton Sanderson from Tucker Pullman and Joel Janatweenen, and it's 4-2 North Dakota. And Michigan now up against it. Puck skips over Lorensky's stick. Boca will have to go back and retreat. Mott tips it deep. Took a funny bounce. Pullman will flip it out. He makes a, a delicate pass that Mott picks up, flips it high. Wierenski tried to charge into the play, skipped over a stick. Mott, though, takes the neutral zone turnover, crosses the line, brings the puck in deep. Can't get around the corner to get in front. Now flips it out in traffic. But nobody there that's able to take the floater. Back the other way. Here's Kajula racing against Wierenski. They fight for the puck. Kajula comes away with it. Feeds it deep for Schmaltz to chase. Boca there with him. Schmaltz comes away with it on the far side. Fires in traffic. Bounced off a leg. Probably Betzers. Here comes Lorenzi with it. 5.38 to go. Two-goal lead for North Dakota. 
Comfort can't block it. Numbers for North Dakota back the other way. Four on two. Shot saved by Racine. And he knocks it up into the netting. A break from the intensity of hockey to remind you that the NCAA Women's Elite Eight matchups will be for you tomorrow on ESPN. Washington and Stanford starting, then Tennessee and Syracuse, the second of the doubleheader. Both games streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. The final of the Cincinnati Midwest Regional. Winner to the Frozen Four. Loser season is done. North Dakota with a couple of goals to go ahead 4-2 in this third period. Martin and Ciccone, the defensive pair, combined to chip it out for Michigan. North Dakota sends it back into Ciccone's pads. He feeds it up. Selman tips it deep for the Wolverines. Keaton Thompson cycles around. Jana Tweenin couldn't handle it. Sanderson puts a hit on but missed the blocking the shot. Now the puck high off the glass. And that will be an icing call, and the faceoff will come back into the North Dakota end. Players start to clutch those sticks a little tight at this point. Well, if you're North Dakota, you don't want to sit back and give the Michigan offense any momentum. They're going to use their timeout here. They're going to get on the drawing board. They're going to work one of their face-off plays. We talked about that yesterday. We saw it on one of the goals. A misdirection play of sort is something they're drawing up, getting the wingers moving around the circle, trying to get a defenseman involved to walk to the middle. They need to make a play off this face-off. Big, big face-off for Michigan. So we went from a tie game at 2-2 to North Dakota having a two-goal lead in the space of a minute and 14 seconds by two plays that were both reviewed for high sticks. One a stick out of the neutral zone. It led to a goal scored by Red Gardner. And the second, Colton Sanderson with the deflection right in front of Steve Racine. So is North Dakota on its way to a third consecutive Frozen Four? You see Quinnipiac winning earlier today in the East. They await the winner of UMass and Lowell. Denver putting a pretty good uh, hurting on the BU. Ferris State knocking out the one seed in the West earlier. St. Cloud State. And Minnesota Duluth and Boston College to play later on tonight in Worcester in the Northeast region for that spot in the Frozen Four. Right now, the area right at the blue line is very important for both teams. 4.41 left in this game. North Dakota leads 4-2 over Michigan. North Dakota, one of the most successful programs in NCAA hockey history. Seven national championships. Recent years have been years of frustration where they get to the verge of competing for another national championship and for a variety of reasons, they fall short. Some heartbreaking losses in regionals in the Frozen Four. It's been a little while since North Dakota has taken home the big trophy. Last time in 2000, Brad Berry, when he met with his players for the first time in late August, said to his team, hey, let's do something special this year. Let's check the last box. And that last box is to be the one skating off the trophy in Tampa. Well, they've come to expect winning the North Dakota fans, some of the best fans in hockey. They want to see championships. Just getting to the Frozen Four, it is good, but it's not good enough for them. What a passionate group of fans that they have there in North Dakota. Marodi feeds in. Dax tried to play it around. Kajula on the ice, fires it back around. Pinched at the point. DeYoung kept it in. Michigan throwing a lot of things forward. It was a long time before DeYoung came back out to his point position and nobody was covering for him very much. Downing will fire it deep. Wolverines go for a change. First line back on for Michigan, as you would expect. Connor, Comfer, and Mott. I expect we'll see them a lot in this final three minutes and 50 seconds. Turnover at the blue line. Pogansky against Wierenski. Wierenski goes down with that leg pinned behind him. Gets back up. But Pogansky still fights for the puck. 
North Dakota just swarming Michigan right now, not letting them out of the zone. These guys can't get on offense when this North Dakota team is still skating at the pace that they are and swarming the puck along the walls. Comfer feeds it back to his defenseman. Boca exchanges with Wierenski. Here they come. Far side, Comfer, puck skips over his stick. Knocked back the other way by North Dakota. Michigan has to be careful. Player coming off the bench, had a shot at it. That was Jenna Tweenen. Change for the Wolverines. Here's DeYoung. Change of defenseman for the Wolverines. And now the forward line begins to siphle out. Alex Kyle is on. But Connor and Comfer still on. Comfer feeds it over to DeYoung. Puck skipped over his stick, couldn't get a shot away. Nice work to get away from Chiswick. Tries to fire through. Good block there by Pullman. Back to the point. Comfort shot. Blocked again. Chiswick gets the breakaway pass. Can he put it away? Saved by Racine. Penalty coming up on Michigan. Big block late in this game, leading to the breakaway for North Dakota. Steven Racine keeping his team alive with that big save. Chiswick had the chance on the breakaway. Racine up to the challenge, but they do draw the power play. Michigan going to go to the box two minutes here with 2.31 to go. You got to think, they got to talk about getting their goalie out and getting this to five on five. Playing shorthanded for the last two of the last two and a half minutes, not in Michigan's favor. So downing for slashing for the remainder of regulation time. And here we go. They tried for the home run hit to Nieves on the shorthanded spot up the center. And a whistle and a stoppage of play with 2.19 to go and a face-off deep in the zone. So again, Michigan shorthanded. It does give the Wolverines an opportunity to get the goaltender out of the game and go five apiece. Red Berenson trying to pull all the strategy stops out that he can to see if he can find a way to keep his team season going. The speculation about Red's last game, again, his contract up at the end of the season, new athletic director in Michigan. He said they'll sit down at the end of the season and talk about what's best for the program. He said, it's not about me. It's about what's best for the program. So the Evans with the puck. The Michigan net empty. Under two minutes to go in the game. They trail by two. The Evans into the zone. Comfort trails. Fires it across. Mott too far back to get that puck. Mott turns around, fires it. Puck floated down toward the net. Will it make it? Yes! Paul Ledoux gets credited with the empty net goal, and it's 5-2 North Dakota. And the big junior defenseman, they're winning battles on the wall. Thought about going to pro last season, came back for his junior season. The LA Kings draft pick shoots 180 feet. That just trickles in. And North Dakota, they have been a dominating bunch. Michigan, they came out, they played a hard game today, but what a dominating performance by North Dakota in our Midwest Regional. Sanderson flips that one out of play. Look out in the grandstands. So Ledoux unassisted and a three-goal lead. Let's uh, talk about Michigan's season just for a moment. After missing the NCAA tournament for the last three years, they're back in it this year. They win their first ever Big Ten championship. They're going to come up short after the overtime win against Notre Dame the other day in the regional final. It looks like this is where the end of the line is. Well, when you play for a school like Michigan or North Dakota, 
if the season doesn't end with the national championship, it's not considered a success. And Michigan's going to have to go back to the drawing board. They have a lot to figure out. This whole first line, they could be gone. Zach Wierenski, we could see him playing for the Blue Jackets later in this week. A lot going on for Michigan in the offseason. North Dakota on the other side, they are a powerful team in the Frozen Four. They are going to be tough for any team to deal with. They have made the Frozen Four in seven of the last 11 years, the last three straight, and they're 45 seconds away from going again to play for a national championship down in Tampa. Racine back in the net will handle that one, drop it on the ice, and keep the clock running. Well, young team with a new coach, not new to the program, first year head man, never missed a beat in the transition. And Bradbury and his team are going to go to Tampa and play for a national championship in 15 more seconds. What a great game Troy Stetcher had today. So many contributions he makes with his stick away from the puck. Known as his offensive guy, but great on the defensive side as well. The Midwest region and the first spot of the Frozen Four goes to North Dakota. And now the great hockey tradition after the hard-fought series and game. The handshakes at center ice. And there's a lot of respect between these two programs before the game. You see some of the guys, they know each other, they chat. Thank you for your support of the A lot of respect as you go through that handshake. A tough way to end the season for Michigan, but North Dakota, they're blazing on through. They're working towards that big goal, and they look like a team that's built to do it. So it's North Dakota, the winner of the Midwest Regional here in Cincinnati and on to Tampa for the Frozen Four. We'll wrap things up from here in Cincinnati in just a minute. Final score, North Dakota 5, Michigan 2. The celebration begins as the final horn sounds. North Dakota's going to the Frozen Four after a 5-2 win over Michigan. North Dakota wins the Midwest Region. North Dakota's head coach Brad Berry joins us now live. Coach, congratulations. You said you wanted to check the last box this year. You're one step closer. One step closer. We checked once tonight. We got two more to go here. And uh, again, uh, guys played hard. They played extremely hard again tonight. Coach, go celebrate with your team. We'll talk to you in the Thanks, frozen floor. Enjoy. See you congratulations. In a few days. Bye bye. They're taking all the team pictures out there, and so uh, we didn't want to make Coach Miss be a part of that. He's uh, jogging back out and jumping on top of the pile, which is fun. So North Dakota is through into the Frozen Four. They await the winner of Ferris State and what is likely Denver. And then in the top bracket, Quinnipiac awaiting the winner of UMass Lowell. And Yale. And Minnesota Duluth and D.C. to play later on tonight. Some great hockey here in Cincinnati and a great host for the NCAA Regionals as well. It was a lot of fun. The NCAA Hockey Championships presented by Northwestern Mutual continue. Minnesota Duluth takes on Boston College, ESPNU at 9 Eastern Time. For Colby Cohen, Alan Bestwick, so long from Cincinnati, North Dakota, a 5-2 winner.